morning everybody a little bit later and some things to do but yeah it was a big Europa League evening that fortunately I actually got to see the second half of the second uh, part of games I watched the uh, conference that the zone has uh, if you don't know the zone or you don't have the zone um, it's awesome it is awesome. I don't know um, in what countries it is available. I think in the UK. I know in Germany and Austria because that's the one that I have. I know in Italy. Um, I paid 10 euro, euros. I was half talking German. Um, and I get per month. And you get so many games. I mean, it's my fix. Uh, I can watch any league that I'm interested in. Personally interested in except the Austrian league and uh, I'm, I probably wouldn't watch much there anyway because uh, the Austrian league is one of those leagues that are better watched um, in the stadium. If you watch it on TV you just, unless it's one of the bigger teams, you're usually turned off by the small number of spectators and so on. So yeah, awesome. Uh, it should be a commercial, but I just, I, I keep telling everyone, work. I'm watching uh, Serie A, any game, uh, La Liga, any game. Now they have most of the Champions League games, I mean, huge portion of Champions League games. They have all Europa League games, so also that is cool. Um, uh, League 1, they have everything, Premier League, uh, you name it, I can watch it. Uh, Bundesliga, which is the least interesting uh, for me, I can, I could watch highlights and I think full replays uh, after a few hours, so even that is possible if I was ever interested. Uh, as I said, I'm not too much into the German Bundesliga. Then they have from all other soccer leagues, you know, I, I remember that in May I watched the uh, um, Danish Derby, uh, the Danish Copenhagen uh, Derby, uh, Brøndby against FC. I, you know, they have even the Eredivisie. So if you want to see Ajax or PSV or so on, you usually can watch that too. Uh, they had uh, Benfica, uh, Sporting. They had on, you know, it, it's really awesome. And then in, a, in, in addition for me, I get NHL and NFL. Maybe not as full as I wanted, but you know, uh, the NFL channel. For Red Zone, the great. Uh, speaking of N NFL, for me, almost the most uh, most notable thing happening in sports was that the Browns won yesterday evening. The Browns won. They haven't won the entire year. Last year, they they had I think out of 32 games, they won only one, and now they won again. So that's pretty cool. The lovable losers maybe will become winners. That would be the story. But we're talking in soccer. I'm already, uh, you know, my drive to work now is a little bit shorter because I was already downtown. Well, what I saw is, uh, first first of all, I Europa League is in some ways more interesting because you see a wider range of teams. And on, there are, I think, two or three teams in there that I literally have not heard before, uh, which doesn't happen that often. I usually know every team in the Europa League. This year, no. <laughs> there are two teams. Uh, and the one that was the opponent of Arsenal yesterday. Arsenal won 4-2. I mean, they were 4 nothing up and then got two late goals. I think it was a Ukrainian team. Montava, I think. So, something like that. And uh, then a Turkish team. Uh, I saw not the highlights. I don't even recall the name. But yeah. Uh, in that sense, it's interesting. The games that I wanted to watch were uh, kind of a between against uh, Spartak Moskva. Um, couldn't, this is 7 o'clock, this is at the moment right the dead zone for me because uh, kids need to be put to bed. And I would have put on a second uh, Pauk against Chelsea. Probably decided between those two. Uh, story in those, quickly told. Um, uh, beat actually dominated Spartak, which I was surprised, but I think the Spartak had quite some um, troubles. I heard that two players were making a mo 
walking poem of their coach. The coach got rid of them. So I think there was a decent amount of unrest and Spartak was dominated by Rapid, uh, who themselves have quite some problems. Uh, most of it homemade. Uh, the problem with Rapid is that the fans are almost too dominant within club culture. I always have to, uh, within the club. Uh, the coach is well supported by the staff. They know that he is actually doing something right. Uh, he's just not playing in the style, you know, the sweat and tears that the Rapid fan wants to see. Uh, I saw the highlights also. So they got two goals. The first one was scrapped, the second one I think was okay. Um, I saw also the highlights of Park versus Chelsea, where, from what I can tell, Chelsea dominated, unfortunately. The proceedings uh, got an early goal, should have made it two, if not three. Um, and then, uh, speaking of shoots, Antonio Rüdiger should have been sent off. Uh, no doubt about it, he only got a yellow. I think I get the argument of the UEFA president why VAR is not yet um, instituted in European competition because they want to have a central uh, system and you have to work out all the TV feeds and so on. So I kind of get it, it's still um, a little bit strange that, that they didn't move further forward with that a little bit sooner. Uh, of the early results, the one that kind of stuck out for me too was that Frankfurt was winning 2-1 uh, in Marseille. It was, not a, it was not a good day for the French. I think Bordeaux also lost and um, Rennes was the only one that actually won a game. I think against the opponent. Just saw the highlights, that's why I, I, I remember that one. So Frankfurt winning to, against Marseille was a little bit of a surprise to me. I, I would have gone the other way. And then of course in the evening games there were two that I was really interested in. That was uh, of course Milan against Dudelange. I'm a Milan fan, you know, I'm wearing Milan. From that you can already tell that you have Milan won this one, but you know. I, this was a scrappy 1-0 win, probably should have been 2-0. Uh, Igoin scoring a goal that was deflected, uh, I'm happy that went in. Those are just points that you need to get. Uh, do I wish that they would have done it like our Arsenal and put a few goals past uh, Dudelange? Yes, I would, but um, you know, I take the three points, especially since Olympiacos and Betis uh, played out at the wall. So um, you could not ask for more. I also think, uh, speaking of draws, it was almost all the teams that, uh, that won and that I kind of have to root for. I mean, Milan, yes, I will always root for. The two Austrian teams I really don't like, but you know, they are the Austrian teams, so you gotta hope that they do well because it also is in the interest of my team, Lask, who. Yeah, Besiktas, I think, won yesterday. They were eliminated by Besiktas, but it was a real scare for Besiktas. I actually feel quite confident in saying that if Lask would have eliminated Besiktas, Lask would be in the group stage. I'm really confident, but on the other side, maybe it's for the better, because now they can concentrate on the league, and they're doing at the moment really well, although I'm a bit nervous they are playing Austria Wien um, this Saturday away from home and uh, that could be a tricky one, that could be a tricky one. But yeah, back to the Europa League, so I said um, there were draws, uh, I think Glasgow Rangers also played only a 2-2 in the group of um, Rapid. And then yeah, the other, the almost the biggest game, it's a little bit weird to say, was the Battle of the Cans energy drink cans uh, between Leipzig and uh, Salzburg which yeah I know that Salzburg is a really good team but I never expected them to beat Leipzig especially since you know uh, Salzburg was the main focus of the Red Bull Empire until Leipzig uh, made it to the second Bundesliga at that moment there were a lot of shuffling around of players all the good Salzburg players went to Leipzig uh, <laughs> until UEFA said, uh, 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 don't do that. And yeah, now they are the two independent teams. But they played out a nice match and I actually was surprised that Salzburg was playing with the third jersey in red. I guess this is for uh, image reasons, because it actually looked a decent short matchup. The other two jerseys that Salzburg has, 
the white with the red will cross a little bit like the Montpellier. The dead one I think is just okay, but then the dark one is a horrible thing. I'll do in my Europa League jersey review. I will look at these. This is coming. I also will do, but first Champions League, of course. Yep. So that was that was uh, um, that was the big game I thought uh, from the names. Also, kind of in interesting because the, those are probably the, uh, two of the least liked teams in all of Europe. Uh, even if you don't care about the Bundesliga, even if you don't care about uh, the Austrian Bundesliga, you know that those teams uh, is kind of everything that corporate uh, soccer is about. So yeah. It seemingly also didn't attract too many people because the stadium uh, there were quite some empty seats but you know uh, I think it was maybe half full two-thirds somewhere there uh, which is decent the game quickly said uh, Leipzig many many errors in the first half and uh, Salzburg scored two goals uh, and looked safe but then suddenly um, Salzburg decided to make an error too, and it, it's so weird. It's, uh, they were almost, almost more Austrian players on Leipzig than uh, Salzburg. So uh, Ulmer, the Salzburg defender, made a mistake, and Leimer, a former Salzburg player, also Austrian, scores the goal. And of course, there were I think two or three Leipzig players, or if not more, that all already played for Salzburg too. So you know, it was really, really weird in many ways. Um, and you can make an ar argument that the better uh, Austrian players are playing for uh, Leipzig. But Ilsanka also made a mistake, horrible mistake, uh, ahead of the one I think. So yeah, there you go. So uh, Leimer cut the lead in half and then uh, suddenly Leipzig got going and it became an intense game. Everything that did not work suddenly did work for them. And they got a well-deserved um, equalizer at that point because they were really pulling a lot, lot of pressure. Maybe not well-deserved, but it was uh, not surprising by Yusuf Paulsen, the Danish international who scored the win against Peru. Hate him for that. Uh, not hate, but you know, that was a dagger in my heart at the World Cup. The first real one and the one that I think of all the results at the World Cup, this one almost hurt the most. The ones that did not go in my favor. Uh, yeah, it was 2-2 and I actually thought, wow, Salzburg gonna lose this? No, they're not. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you watching uh, the winning goal of Salzburg. Not the way that Gould Brunson made it, but the um, way that the counter-attack was set up first. Junuzovic at midfield uh, back heels a wide pass to uh, Hannes Wolf and then Hannes Wolf does the same thing, even a better back heel uh, into Gulbranson's uh, way and he scores the winner. 3-2 and the celebration on the Salzburg line were quite big. Uh, that was for me the biggest surprise um, because you know the teams are friendly with each other, you could see it after um, the game they were hugging da, 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 da. but during the game they actually there was some pride at stake who is the better team in the Red Bull group and that yesterday was Salzburg uh, I think overall maybe at the time that the goal was scored they were not uh, it was not obvious that they're gonna score or win this game but I think overall from what I could tell yes they won it and then I think the other game that was uh, because you know uh, German does own, so they focus on the German teams. Leverkusen playing in Rasgrad against Ludo Goretz. Um, yes, my wife is from Bulgaria, but I have little connection to Rasgrad, so I I want them, of course, to do well because I wish the Bulgarian league is also getting a little bit. But yeah, they were up to nothing, and Leverkusen turned it around, made it three-two. Um, I said draws, I'm losing my <laughs> train of thought a little bit. Uh, Salzburg plays in a group also with Celtic and Rosenborg and Celtic got a late winner against Rosen. Uh, yeah, Celtic got a late winner, yes, it was not, not a draw 
against Rosenborg. Yeah, so Salzburg and Celtic uh, are ahead. And I actually want to say they play next. Which is going to be interesting, to say the least. But yeah, we're going to... Gotta check on that. But yeah, I, I think Salzburg and Celtic, I mean the group for Celtic, honestly, um, your Celtic Celtic's one of those really, really, really traditional teams. And then you have the two Red Bull teams in the, in, in the group. That's just something not <laughs> quite connecting. Uh, I gotta say, between Celtic and Rangers, they both play the Austrian teams. I always, you know, when I when I started really watching Rangers were the big team. I mean, they were just a hair away from playing in the Champions League final uh, in '93. I would have loved me to play Rangers, not Marseille. Uh, gotta be honest. Uh, but yeah, I always had a little bit more sympathy for that reason for Rangers. But I think, meanwhile, I honestly don't. I think it's similar. I, there's one part of me that likes the big firm teams. Another one is, yeah, they're dominating Scottish soccer so much that I would rather go for a, a lesser level team. But if they would play, say, a Premier League team, I probably would go for the Scots. Just because I like when the Scots can a little bit, uh, you know, rub the English a bit wrong. But it's. Nothing in. There's really nothing malicious with it. Uh, it's just, you know, if the, it's the same thing when an Austrian team beats a German team. When uh, Big uh, when big Brother is a little bit teased by Little Brother, that's what I'm going for there. But I guess, yeah, that's all, all I can say. I think the other thing that's a little bit against Celtic is uh, the green and white colors, which I've been almost conditioned to not like. Uh, although actually the hook shirts, that, that's one of the most classic looks in Europe. Uh, and yeah, the Celtic line, they, you know, Celtic has something. They beat Inter <laughs> in a Euro European Cup final in 67. So I mean, yeah, there's some things. As I said, there's nothing, I, there's no hatred for me to either one of these teams. I know there's a lot of hatred between them. Uh, other results that I can now recall, I think I saw the, um, Lazio against Limassol 2-1, uh, a decent result. Uh, I thought I was uh, so surprised that Dynamo, Dynamo Kiev only played 2-2 against Astana. I mentioned already the French teams. Uh, what else was there? That is of note, I think Zurich won also in Larnaca. So FT Zurich is doing a little bit. I guess that was pretty much it. I saw, you know, Olympiakos against Betis was a goalless draw. Cannot say much more to that. I saw one chance by Olympiakos. I already talked about Pauk, so yeah, they, they are called the Greek teams. Ah, Henk. I remember Henk beat Malmö to nothing. <laughs> so yeah, uh, those are games where I saw some highlights. Uh, overall, I think it was nothing. The Pauk defeat was a little bit. Um, I was hoping for at least a draw for Pauk, but yeah, what can you do? Uh, Chelsea's on really, really good form, and yeah, now I think they won't. I won't watch any soccer tonight, but I'm hopeful that on the weekend I get in a few games again. So let's see how it goes. Uh, let me know which games you watched, if you watched any, any games. I know the Europa League is not as popular. I actually start liking this competition a lot. I think they have some interesting games and interesting matchups, especially now that some of the bigger names like Milan and Arsenal are also in there and Chelsea. I mean, there are three big names right there that are in there. So uh, that makes for nice watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. And I will talk to you soon. There will be over the weekend, I'll try to get all the Champions League jersey reviews in. Bye, talk to you soon.